several times in the lectures to date, I have mentioned that the moon's desiccated. It doesn't have water. Uh, there's no oceans in the moon, no lakes, no rivers. Um, the moon rocks that were brought back by the Apollo astronauts and by the lunar spacecraft uh, when they sent them back from, from the surface of the moon, they were very desiccated rocks. They were very dry rocks. But does the moon have water? Uh, this is a big question because if we ever send colonists to the moon or try to establish a moon base, you know, the, the idea was we have to take our own water because humans have to have water. But is there water there? Um, I mentioned that the Clementine spacecraft, as it flew past the moon in the late 90s, uh, sent radar that bounced off the moon and then was picked up on Earth, and it reflected off of the polar craters in a characteristic way that radar reflects off of ice. Well, that would suggest that maybe in these polar regions where the sun doesn't shine, there might be ice. Well, how you get ice there? Well, one idea is that you get a, a comet impact and it, it creates a cloud of gas that surrounds the moon. And when it sinks into these, these, these craters where the sun never shines, so it's very, very cold, always you know, uh, way below freezing, 100 degrees or so below freezing. And so it's going to be super cold there. This is what we call a, a water trap. And so uh, it would freeze there and form kind of like a layer of frost. And the idea would be you, you'd build more and more frost over time. So there were like these, these speculations that these craters might be giant pools of ice. And so, uh, yeah, I remember when they first came up with this data, I was a little skeptical of that because I was thinking, well, you're also throwing a lot of dust in there from impact, so at best, it's going to be like permafrost. Um, later missions searched for these giant pools of ice in these craters, and either they found nothing or not very much ice. You know, so uh, they, they uh, a couple of them actually tried to fire projectiles into these craters to see plumes of ice come up, and they didn't find Deep Impact and Cassini spacecraft, uh, as they were passing the moon, uh, actually were studying it spectroscopically and found hydroxyl. Now, hydroxyl is OH. And so uh, when, when water, which is H2O, it's really HOH. Okay, so you can actually separate it into H and OH. So the idea is if you find hydroxyl, that might be suggestive of water. And they found that there were actually found hydroxyl signatures from multiple places in the moon, not just where the uh, uh, cr polar craters were, suggesting maybe there's water all over the moon. Uh, the Indian uh, Chandrayaan uh, spacecraft also found hydroxyl with much higher resolution. And so it was only able to measure the uppermost part of the lunar surface. And so just the, the upper few millimeters, but it found hydroxyls all over the place. Now, uh, the uh, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and the LCROSS spacecraft, they also uh, were, were measuring this. And they also measured hydroxyls over a large portion of the surface. Uh, in fact, they, spent, they shot a, a booster rocket into the shadowed region here in one of these craters and measured the plume. The plume was about 5% water. Okay, so again, this is like permafrost. And so it does suggest that there's water there. Now, where's all the hydroxyls come from? Well, we got two different sources. One is that comets can run into the moon and they can bring water to the moon. Now, there are a lot of comets out there, and the moon's been up there for a long time, so a lot of comets hitting the moon. A lot of those craters are likely due to comet impacts, not just asteroid impacts. Even asteroids, we believe, have some water in them. Again, not all that water is going to dissipate right away into space. It's going to, it's going to hang around the moon as water vapor, and some of it's going to stick you know, when it lands in those cool regions. And so uh, the other possibility is hydroxyls can form 
when protons, that's part of the solar wind particles, run into the moon and they slam into the lunar surface and they interact with oxygen that's already on the lunar surface. Uh, silicon dioxide is part of what makes up the lunar surface. And so uh, that can form hydroxyls also uh, near the surface. That's not making water. It's making hydroxyls separate from water. So the big question is, are these hydroxyls that we have found signatures of water or signatures of something else? You know, uh, we like to think it's water, but it could be something else. So how much is this? What well, says that near the surface of the moon, it can be between 0.1 and 1% water by weight. Now, well, how much would that be? Well, that would be very much similar to about a liter per cubic meter. Now, here's the question. How deep is this? Okay, if the hydroxyl, if the water is formed by comet impact, it's going to be mixed in the uppermost part of the regolith. And so that means it might not be very deep. So it could be confined to very much the surface. In other words, it, instead of going like a, a meter deep, in which case you scoop up a cubic meter and you can process like a water bottle out of it, a small, small one liter water bottle, okay, um, uh, or half liter water bottle, because we're assuming we're not going to be perfectly efficient, then um, that's one thing. But if it's, if it's confined to the upper few centimeters, you might have to like, you know, process like 100 square meters, you know, or 10 by 10 meter area of the surface in order to get one liter of water. And so uh, it, it might be chemically bonded to other stuff also. So we don't really know from the data that we've had, you know, like that, it doesn't really tell us. One thing, though, that's interesting is uh, October of 2020. Uh, now, there's a lot of things that they had to shut down during 2020, uh, but they did have uh, analysis of a mission that was flown on the Sophia spacecraft earlier that looked at the infrared spectrum that was able to distinguish that, in fact, this is water that we're picking up, not just plain hydroxyl. And uh, it does appear to be in some of the more shady spots on the lunar surface here. So even the crater Clavius, which is a sunlit crater, does have regions that are frequently in the shade. And it does seem to have water in there. And again, the water could actually, you know, even if it's mixed in with the regolith, then it's possible that, that if you get below a certain depth, then the solar heating doesn't heat the ground to a huge depth. And so it might still be like permafrost down underneath the, the surface, in which case there might actually be about a liter per cubic meter in the surface. Now, we're still processing this data. We don't really know for sure how much water is there, but it does suggest that there may be a little bit more water than was originally suspected. Well, why did that not show up in the Apollo missions? Well, the Apollo missions studied rocks brought back, not so much lunar regolith, which is the soil the rocks are very much desiccated. So it could be that, that the moon has very little native water in it, but it might be that this water is being brought to the moon by comets and then mixed in with the lunar regolith, the soil. It could be that the rocks that we find at the surface of the moon have been experiencing ultra high heat through impact. Remember that that you're not just going to have a just a rock laying on the surface of the moon. There's no erosion to break apart all the other stuff that's out there. So impacts have done that. That's a very violent process. So it could be the rocks themselves have experienced higher temperatures because of impacts, and that may have driven water out of them. So once again. You know, you know, we only have six places that humans have been and brought back samples, and only a few other places the Soviets, you know, landed unmanned missions and sent back a few small samples. And so we really have a very tiny portion of the lunar surface that we have studied. And so we cannot fully answer the question about water in the moon. To really answer this question, 
is going to involve something other than looking at the moon from a long distance away. We're going to have to land on the moon again. We're going to have to collect samples. We're going to have to drill into the moon. We're going to have to collect samples from deeper under the surface. Again, the astronauts only collected soil samples right near the surface. And, and they tried to collect some from a little bit below, but, but again, you know, the, the samples were, were uh, uh, not completely unaltered because they were, because, you know, they're right near the surface. So uh, we, we really need to get back to the moon to really answer the question, is there water on the moon? I would think we're going to find that the moon still is much drier than the driest portions of Earth. Earth is a pretty wet world. Um, but it does appear that the moon has far more water as of what we have found in the last decade or so, that the moon does have far more water than was originally suspected from the Apollo missions.